When we think of archaeology, we often imagine people in grimy clothes digging at excavation sites and exploring dark caves, but modern archaeology kind of looks very, very different. Today, archaeologists rely on more than just their shovels, whether it's AI, virtual reality, drones, or portable devices able to scan and analyze the chemicals in soil. Modern technology is revolutionizing the way that we study our long-buried history. Now we're able to reconstruct old artifacts, explore dangerous sites from a distance, and learn more from a simple dirt sample than ever before. It is true that excavation will likely always be a necessary part of archaeology, but at this stage, it's just a small piece of an entire multidisciplinary process. Archaeologists now have to know their chemistry, engineering, their data analysis. It's a lot of stuff. And as our technology continues to evolve, well, so will the field of archaeology. So let's see how it's changed recently, shall we? Drones make everything safer. Drones have been a real game changer in the field of archaeology. Working as an archaeologist often requires a lot of footwork and venturing into rough terrains, which can take a toll on the human body. And what's worse, exploring caves in particular can be genuinely dangerous. Caves are scary. It's been reported that in the US, three people die each year while caving. About 16 people get injured doing the same thing. Now, those might not seem like particularly high numbers, but they do make one thing clear. Being an archaeologist is not danger-free. See... Indiana Jones. But this is where drone technology comes in. Archaeologists use unmanned drones, meaning that they can be controlled remotely. Instead of sending a person inside a potentially dangerous cave, archaeologists can now use drones instead to explore the area, which makes everything a whole lot safer. Drone technology has also proved useful in other ways. Studies show that it can aid archaeologists with their research by providing more insight and detailed analysis of sediments. On top of all that, drones also make everything faster. Before this technology became available, archaeologists would have to rely on their own eyes, as well as the very expensive aerial photography method. They'd have to comb through fields on their own, hoping to just stumble across something relevant. Now they can simply send out drones to scan any area that they're interested in, getting detailed photography in the process. The data is collected much faster, as the drones can cover more ground in a short amount of time. Simply put, sending out a drone can help archaeologists discover new excavation possibilities all without having to spend hours walking around in the mud. It's a much safer and more time-efficient way to work, and there's no doubt this technology will continue being used by archaeologists everywhere. Soil geochemistry helps us discover human activity. If you want proof that archaeology is becoming a truly interdisciplinary field, soil geochemistry is a perfect example of this. It uses chemistry, geology, and statistics to give information about past human activity. Sometimes, not everything from a past civilization survives. Items can erode or decompose, leaving archaeologists with little to study, at least at first glance. However, there's always the soil, which can tell us more than you think. When humans live somewhere, they interact with the local soil, and as a result, often change its chemistry. Looking at trace metals, nutrient levels, and other markers can help archaeologists determine if humans have lived in a certain place. But they can find out a whole lot more than that. Just by analyzing the soil, archaeologists are able to understand what kind of society lived in that specific place. They can reconstruct their agricultural and industrial practices and even get a glimpse of their settlement dynamics. On top of that, soil chemistry can actually give us some ecological answers too. When archaeologists analyze the soil, they also gain information about the long-term impact of human activity on nature. A simple dirt sample can tell us so much not just about the past, but also about the future of humanity. This technology is especially impressive if you look at just how easy it is to use. There are handheld portable devices that archaeologists can take to the field with them. For example, one device called Syab's Z300 can tell you if there's a particular element from the periodic table in a matter of seconds. And as technology evolves, it's likely that these devices will be able to tell us even more. AI and machine learning can reach new depths. There's no denying that artificial intelligence is a controversial topic these days, and, well, archaeologists agree. But while they cite potential data biases and privacy concerns, AI has still become an important tool in the field of archaeology. There's so much that AI can achieve that we were previously not quite able to do, or at least not as efficiently. For example, it's good for pattern recognition and predictive modeling. When archaeologists find just pieces of ancient artifacts, it can be extremely difficult and time-consuming to fit them back together. But the process is much simpler with the use of AI. 
It can analyze the individual pieces and digitally reconstruct the artifact in almost no time at all. These AI-assisted 3D reconstructions have been around for over a decade now. For example, in 2013, Iconum, a startup in Paris, was founded. Their goal is to reconstruct and digitize different cultural heritage sites in 3D. Iconum mostly focuses on endangered sites, which helps archaeologists in multiple ways. For one, it aids with research. Some places like Pompeii are largely in ruins, but these 3D reconstructions can help digitally fix some of the damage and show us what Pompeii it would have really looked like. There are also important historical sites that may be more difficult for researchers to reach, such as the ancient city of Palmyra, located in Syria. These AI-assisted reconstructions make sure that archaeologists can study what they need, and they also help preserve endangered but important parts of our history. But AI can do much more than that. It's also become a useful tool for deciphering ancient texts. AI models such as Ithaca or Aeneas can help read ancient Latin and Greek epigraphy. More importantly, Ithaca in particular can also restore these inscriptions with 62% accuracy, so even if we're missing a piece of an old text, AI can help us fill in the blanks. But perhaps the most interesting use of AI in archaeology has to do with underwater sites. For instance, we've been able to learn much more about the ancient Roman city of Baiae than ever before. Baiae was a popular city among rich Romans, and it was once thought to be even better than Pompeii or Capri. It was also known for being quite hedonistic, with lots of scandal and corruption everywhere. Undoubtedly, Baiae is a fascinating piece of history. The issue is that a big part of the city is now underwater due to some volcanic activity in the area. This made it harder to study the site, at least until AI came along. Right now, the city is being monitored and preserved by AI. The technology can also make it easier for divers to communicate and navigate the sea, which again allows for more opportunity to explore places like this. So while archaeologists are certainly aware that AI comes with its problems and concerns, the use of it has definitely revolutionized the field, resulting in faster progress than we've seen before. LiDAR is safe and accurate. One of the most groundbreaking technologies in archaeology is satellite remote sensing, which can quickly record and document any archaeological sites, including ones in politically unstable areas. It's a great way of actively monitoring and preserving the records of our history without putting people in danger. LiDAR is an example of this technology that has truly transformed archaeology. It stands for Light Detection and Ranging, and it uses lasers and a GPS to keep tabs on archaeologically significant landscapes. But LiDAR can do much more than that. The laser technology is good at discovering hidden sites that would be difficult or even impossible for the human eye to spot. Thanks to LiDAR, we've uncovered several historically significant places, including a lost Mayan city that was obstructed by a forest, several sites throughout Mexico, and even a Roman military camp in the Alps. Another thing LiDAR can do is create a 3D map of the area that it's scanning. This is especially useful if the area is difficult to reach, as archaeologists can get a better understanding of the landscape and how they should potentially approach it. This mapping can also help with analyzing new and old discoveries and pointing out any details archaeologists might have missed. The only downside of LiDAR is that it can't do everything. While the technology is incredible in uncovering structures, it can't tell us much about societies that didn't build these permanent sites. This means that, for example, we can't use LiDAR to learn more about Native American history. But while the technology has its limitations, it's clear that its development has been one of the most important moments in the history of modern archaeology. It's the one piece of technology that everyone can agree has truly revolutionized the field more than anything else. Without LiDAR, archaeology would be much further behind than it currently is, and many historically important sites would be in more danger than any of us would like. VR and AR are the technologies of the future. Virtual and augmented reality are something that is becoming more and more popular in archaeology. While this technology still has a long way to go, it's already started changing the way archaeologists conduct their work and research. One of the techniques archaeologists often use in their work is called photogrammetry. Photogrammetry uses images to take measurements and create maps and drawings. It's a great way of recording and saving information about important archaeological sites. However, photogrammetry by itself isn't very useful when it comes to active research and analysis. Luckily, VR and AR can help with that. By using the information collected through photogrammetry, archaeologists can implement VR technology to recreate and simulate the environment of all of those historical sites. 
They can then immerse themselves in these and finally study and analyze them in a much more active and accessible way. But virtual and augmented reality can be used for more than just visualization and reconstruction. Another important aspect of this technology is its ability to educate both archaeology students as well as the general public. Until recently, most of us could only learn about archaeology through books, documentaries, or museum displays. But now it's possible to get a more immersive experience and see history with our own eyes. VR and AR play a huge role in both tourism and education. With the 3D recreations, we can step into past worlds and learn about what certain sites actually used to look like. For example, if you ever wondered what Delphi was like, well, you can now find out. There are VR tours available in the area, just like there are for many other historical sites. But there are still more ways in which archaeologists use virtual reality. Much like AI, VR has also become important in the field of underwater archaeology. The technology can help during the research of certain underwater sites. It's especially useful when archaeologists have to search the deep sea or other hard-to-reach places. Additionally, the 3D recreation of these underwater sites has also helped grow the public's interest in underwater archaeology, which could potentially mean more funding for the field. That being said, there are some downsides to VR and AR. For one, the technology is just not flawless. Studies show that it's still not the best at supporting actual field work. While there are projects and initiatives working on developing VR to be helpful during active work, currently it's mainly used in theoretical research, education, and tourism. Another potential issue is its availability in certain regions. This is something that all the tools we've talked about so far have in common. Some technologies are more available in certain parts of the world than in others. This can lead to academic disparity and make research seem more one-sided and unequal. But luckily, this is something that archaeologists are actively aware of. Many of them are trying to fix and navigate this issue so that technology such as VR can be used on a global level. Sharing the devices across countries and cultures will be crucial if we don't want to limit the scope of research. There are archaeologically significant sites all over the world, and to truly understand more about human history, international collaboration is going to be essential. The Future of Archaeology Drones, soil geochemistry, AI, LiDAR, and VR are, of course, not the only technologies that are currently transforming the field of archaeology. For example, right now, progress is being made in the research of ancient DNA. Previously, analyzing DNA like this was not only extremely expensive, but also not quite possible. Often, archaeologists deal with samples that are degraded and not in the best condition overall, which makes it harder to read information from whatever they manage to find. However, science is always making steps forward, and the field of paleogenetics especially has made some great progress over the last couple of years. This means that soon, archaeologists will be able to obtain more information than ever about past human biology. From old pandemics to migration and group burials, we'll know more about the genetics of our ancestors than ever before. But there's more coming in the future of archaeology as well. It's also expected that the field will become more sustainable and eco-friendly. In the past, excavations weren't always the most gentle things with the environment. Many tools could damage the historical sites themselves and the nature surrounding them. However, we're slowly moving away from this. The new tools currently being used or developed, such as LiDAR, are much more environmentally friendly and conscious than what we'd used before. As scientists develop more tools and technology progresses, we should be able to cause less and less damage while digging out information about our past. It's also clear that the future of archaeology looks more science-based than terrain-based. Chemistry, biology, data analysis, and computer science have all become crucial parts of archaeological research, and the need for the mastery of those other disciplines will likely only continue to grow. This shift comes with its positives as well as negatives. Whilst less field work means less strain on the human body, the interdisciplinary nature of modern archaeology will require researchers to learn more than just history. Archaeologists may start feeling the pressure of diving into more and more science-based disciplines which might not be for everyone. That being said, this change will likely create more need for specializing in a certain aspect of archaeology. It's possible that soon some archaeologists will mostly be chemists, while others will be data engineers or field workers only. One thing is clear, archaeology will no longer look like Indiana Jones movies. Not that it did in the first place. In the future, we should expect more drones, lasers, and digital tools instead. Thank you for watching.